Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 says this, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Well, what is that saving grace, and what is that gift of God? Well, at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, it tells us the Holy Ghost teaches by comparing spiritual words with spiritual words. So we're going to look at every verse in the New Testament with the word grace in it and compare it. Well, lo and behold, we get the answer. And I'm going to tell you what the answer is up front. The saving grace is Jesus. The gift of God is Jesus. Now, why do I believe that? Because of these verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, which says, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God, which is given you by Jesus Christ. So the grace of God is Jesus Christ. Also, if you look at Romans chapter 5, verse 15, it will also tell you that the grace of God is Jesus. And I believe it also tells us the gift of God is Jesus. This is the last part of Romans chapter 5, verse 15. The grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ. So I'm going to re read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, as it's stated in the Bible, and then reread it with our interpretation. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, with the interpretation. For by Jesus are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is Jesus, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, the second interpretation, I'm not as dogmatic as I am about the first one. There are some people who would come up with a different interpretation for the gift of God. But I believe they're both Jesus. But what's the point? The point is, if you want to go to heaven, if you want to be saved, the object of your faith for heaven must be only Jesus. There are so many people and religions out there that tell lost people that they have to work, serve, do the, all sorts of human performance to get to heaven. That's not true. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. The last part says, not of works. All right, so the object of your faith must be Jesus and him alone. All right, since we may have some new viewers, I'm going to review some basics of how to get to heaven. Of course, all humans are sinners. So we must be saved from our sins. We have to get rid of our sins. How do we do that? Well, Matthew 121 has some good news, which says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Well, how does Jesus do this? Well, Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He went to the cross. He died for our sins. He was buried, and he rose from the dead. That's the gospel, the saving gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ defined at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. So how do we get saved specifically? Acts 16, 30, 31 tells us the most direct question and answer in the Bible on how to be saved. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So bottom line, if you want to go to heaven, if you want to be saved from your sins, you must put your faith, belief, trust in Jesus, Him alone, and nothing else for your eternal life.